a beginner's guide to WordPress troubleshooting. If you are watching this, you are likely a big WordPress fan, and it's easy to see why. The content management system is powerful and feature-packed, but it's not without its foibles. While the platform is normally rock-solid, running into a bug or error is inevitable, given its complexity and flexibility. Learning the basics of WordPress troubleshooting, therefore, is vital. By learning how to fix some of WordPress most common errors, you'll be able to tackle any bugs that you run into without calling for assistance. It's the kind of skill that can save you a lot of headaches down the line. In this video, we'll explore three of the platform's most common errors before diving into the basics of WordPress troubleshooting. Let's get started. WordPress errors comes in many shapes and sizes, such as the maintenance mode bug or the connection timed out message. However, to cover them all would take an eternity, so let's focus on the three most common suspects you'll come across. First is 404 or page not found errors. 404 errors are the most common and easily fixed by the bunch. They appear when someone browses for a URL that cannot be found on your site, and there are many reasons for it to occur – broken links or typos in the address, for example. Finding and fixing broken links takes seconds, but you need to locate them first, and also consider the security issues that arise for both you and the visitors. The second error is the widescreen of death. This dramatically named WordPress bug also happens to be one of the most annoying ones out there. If your website suddenly begins to display a white screen, you've been hit. This is often caused by auto-upgrade problems, maintenance mode errors or compatibility woes with plugins and themes. All these potential causes make it somewhat of a nightmare to troubleshoot especially as you receive no clue as to the cause. The third is about internal server errors. In contrast to the WSOD, internal server errors are easily identifiable. When it occurs, you'll be greeted by gigantic internal server error message. So, there's no mistaking it. The real problem comes at the troubleshooting stage since there are a wide number of factors that can chaos these internal server errors. Before we get our hands dirty with some WordPress troubleshooting, it's important to back up the website. In fact, you should always back up your site before tinkering with your WordPress install in case the worst happens. You could potentially lose your entire site. Far away, plugin and theme incompatibilities are the main causes of errors, and they should be your first stop when WordPress troubleshooting. However, there are other aspects that can affect your install, including memory limits and broken core files. You can carry out any of the next steps using your web host file manager but I recommend using an FTP client such as FileZilla. Start with disabling your plugins via FTP. First, open your FTP client and log into your site using the credentials you received from your web host at SignUp. Then, navigate to public HTML WP content, you'll find a number of folders inside. Right-click on the plugins folder, select the rename option and change it to anything you like. We recommend choosing a related name so that you don't confuse the folder later on. This simple action will disable every plugin on your WordPress site. Next, navigate to your website to see if the error you experience persists. If so, we can discard plugin compatibility errors as the source of the problem. On the other hand, if the error disappeared, we need to find out exactly which plugin is causing it. Change the name of the plugins folders back to its original one, then open it. Inside, you'll find a folder for each of your plugins. To find the offending one, simply rename each plugins folder as above, 
and check if the error persists. If it disappears, you'll know which plugin was causing it. At this point, you'll either need to contact the developer for a fix and maybe even find an alternative. The second step is to disable your themes via FTP. If disabling your plugins didn't solve the issue, we'll need to carry out a similar troubleshooting procedure with your themes. Back in your FTP client, locate and enter themes folder inside WP content. Instead of disabling themes in a random order as we did with your plugins, the first stop here should be your active theme. Change the folder's name to disable it. Then, check if the error persists. If it does, repeat the process for each theme in the folder until you find the culprits. As with plugins, you'll want to contact the developer for a fix. But given its major role in the design of your site, you'll definitely want to find an alternative. If neither disabling plugins nor theme works, we almost have to throw in the towel. However, we can glean some valuable insight by enabling error logs. This way you can enable your WordPress install to save a record of each time your site experiences an issue. And they are incredibly helpful from a troubleshooting perspective. To enable error logs, navigate to public HTML in your FTP client, find the WP config PHP file, right-click on it, then choose the edit function. Next, add the following three lines to the end of the file using your favorite text editor. Save your change, then reload your site to replicate the error. A log of it should appear within the new debug.log file located in WP content. You can access the file using a text editor and use the information to either Google your predicament or find a local expert to carry out some WordPress troubleshooting on your behalf.